testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It, it, uh, it's good to be back uh, with another episode of Quick Hits. We're going to get into this uh, Rocha and Crawford fight, which a lot of people are going to have a problem with. Um, it's not the fight we want. It's not even on the top three or four fights that we want, but it's a fine fight. It's fine. It's a good fight. Um, and I'm going to get into why. Uh, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog on all forms of social media. Uh, Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. Um, All proceeds uh, from that channel go to autism research and recovery, so it's very near and dear to our heart. So uh, please like and subscribe to that channel as well. All right, so let's get into today's show. Um, I have a, a, a very sneaking suspicion in April... April's going to be a very busy month for Golden Boy. They're going to have Stan Jonas. I'm sorry, April and May. April is going to be, a, a, the spring, I should say, the spring is going to be a very busy month for Golden Boy. You're going to get a Verge and Stan Jonas in Dallas, um, April 29th. And you're also going to get Bud Burst. Um, you're going to get Bud versus Rocha on, in May. We'll find a date. And somewhere mixed in there, you're going to get a PVC card with Errol Spence and Keith Thurman. But we're going to chill on that for a minute. We're not going to spend too much time on that. Um, so you're going to get that unfold. Um, assuming it doesn't matter who wins that fight. The winner, and y'all are picking Bud, and I'm, I'm going to pick Bud too. But the winner of that fight is going to fight Verge. And it'll be a unification fight because Verge is going to be the WBA super champ at that point because Errol Spence will be a 154-pounder. He's going to fight um, Thurman. Bud will be well into his Golden Boy contract. He's not fighting Spence next. Spence can't make 47 anyway. He's just going to be done with the division. He's going to go up to 54. He's going to fight Jarrett Hurd. I guess he's not going to fight Hurd because he'll be at 160. He'll fight a guy like that. First, Jamal Chalo will make another defense. Jamal Chalo will go to 160. And Spence will then win a title at one at 154. So you're going to have Big Chalo go up to 168. Little Chalo go up to 160. Spence go up to 154. And Crawford stay at 47. And fight Rocha and then Verge. You heard it here first. Um, but I'm, I'm going to pick... But, so it, it kind of plays itself out. And look, Rocha is a top 10 welterweight. He is. Okay. We can't put um, Crawford ahead of him. I mean, I'm sorry. We can't put Thurman ahead of him because Thurman's A, not in the weight class. He's fighting out of the weight class. And B, doesn't fight at all anyone ever. Um, over the last four years, let's say, less three years, let's say, Rocha has a better resume. Than Keith Thurman. He just does. He does. It's a better resume. He's got better names on it. Um. So, I mean, Keith Thurman doesn't really fight anyone, so it's not hard to have a better resume than Thurman over the last three years. So, Rosa would go ahead of Thurman, period. Um. I want to see what happens with... Oh, we'll get into that later. So... Roche is a good fighter. He's a really good fighter. Um, and, and again, he's probably not going to beat Crawford. But, look, he's a top 10 guy. So it's not like he doesn't deserve the fight. It's not like he doesn't deserve a title fight. He does. So he, he's going to get it. And then it's sink or swim. Does he win or lose? And I don't think it's impossible that he wins. I, I, I think what we've seen from Crawford is a great fighter who's just a little bit past his peak. What is Crawford now, 34, 35? He's not in his prime anymore. 
right? You, you don't continue to get better at 34 and 35. So it's going to be a little bit worse from Crawford each time he fights. <clears throat> um, and you got a guy in Russia, a young killer, who, who's just getting his way up, right? Two-fisted power, aggressive fighter, has very good boxing skills, has a sturdy chin. Rocha's a good fighter. He can be outboxed, which is why I'm taking, right, you saw Rashidi Ellis do it, which is why I'm taking Crawford in that fight. But it's a good fight, right? If we just pick another division, right, give me the light heavyweight division. Um. Let's let, 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 let's pull up the division, right? You, you got Bavol and you got Better Beef, right? So give me Better Beef. If you put Better Beef in there with a top 10 guy, say Boatsy. I think that's a fair comparison. Is Better Beef versus Boatsy a terrible fight? No, it's not. Not at all. Right? And, and Better Beef versus Bawadze is the equivalent of the welterweight version of Crawford versus Rocha, right? We want Better Beef versus Bavol. Let's say we don't get it. Better Beef versus Bawadze, it's a fine fight. You got an undefeated guy on the come up who's ready for a title fight getting Better Beef. That's not different than Rocha versus Crawford. And no one would really complain. You would say, okay, fine. Better Beef versus Bavol is the fight I want. But I'm not getting it right now because this is boxing, and why would we get it? So I'm getting better V versus Blasi, just like Bavol versus Gilberto Ramirez. Wasn't a bad fight. We kind of knew who was going to win. It was competitive to a degree, but it's two top 10 guys in the division. And so it's not a bad fight. You can even make that argument about Yard, although Yard had a couple losses already. Right? So Roche is going to go in there. He's going to fight like hell. It's going to be a competitive fight, and he's probably going to lose. He's not definitely going to lose, but he's probably going to lose because Crawford's a great fighter. If he wins, we got a mega fight with him and Virgil Ortiz. If he loses, he stays in the top 10 because he's going to lose competitively. And then we get Crawford and Virgil, hopefully in Dallas, probably in, in California or Vegas. I don't know what that would be, right? Um, but that would, I mean, that's a, that's a huge fight right there. So what I'm getting at is it's not the fight we want, but it's a competitive fight. It's a good fight. It's a fight between two top 10 welterweights. you got a, a, a Hall of Fame, all-time great in Terrence Crawford, who doesn't fight but once a year. You usually fight somebody who you don't care about, Mean Machine, Washed Up Khan, Washed Up Brook, David Bennett. You'll fight someone of that stature. Every once in a while, every once in a decade, he fights a good guy like Sean Porter or Postal, Gamboa. That's really it, right? Like in 15 years, whatever it's been, we've been watching Crawford. He's got like three good names that we care about on his resume. And only the hardcores care about Postal, but Postal was really good. Um, And he's going to fight Rocha, a budding, a budding star who, who's on the verge and has earned himself a title shot. I mean, Roach is like Jamal James. Jamal James didn't get that shot against a big name. If he would have, he would have deserved it. He probably would have lost. But he deserves to be. He deserves the opportunity. And he's going to make it competitive. He's just probably not good enough to win. But, again, Crawford's getting older. Crawford's not what he was. He's not. Guys, Crawford was losing to Porter. He had to rally late to, to I don't care what the scorecard says. He was losing going into the 11th round. He needed that stoppage. And he got it. Was it the 11th? It doesn't matter. Um, he was in trouble with the bean machine. He just doesn't fight that often. And then he fought David Evan who Who cares? Um, Rocha will be the best guy he's fought in the welterweight division besides Porter. Um, and again, Rocha at this stage of his career against an AJ Sean Porter makes for a really, really interesting fight. If you go back and you look at Terrence Crawford's resume, Rocha is the second best fighter that he's fought since Postal. <laughs> so <laughs> that was in 2016. So if that fight does happen, it will be the second best opponent 
that Bud has faced since Victor Postal in seven years. So I, you know, this is like the Cowboys, right? Where, where people said, where, where, I'm sorry, where, where Dak said, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. No, this is what you do. This is what Dak Prescott and the Cowboys do. They lose. Actually, it's pretty good, right? Like, actually, the Cowboys getting to the second round of the playoffs, pretty good. That's pretty good. It's better than you usually do. So if you say Rocha versus Crawford is unacceptable, no, it's completely acceptable. Actually, it's pretty good. It's, it's better than what Crawford usually does. I just pointed out that it's his second best opponent he faced in the last seven years. So it's not that it's okay or it's not that it's unacceptable. It's pretty good. It's as good as you're going to get from Crawford. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. A quick hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Please also uh, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. Um, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is February 2nd. 2023. This is our second show of the day. Please go back and check out the other one. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.